Hi, I'm Karen. I'm Simon. And we are... I do canals. And today we're at... The Duke's Cut. The Duke's Cut is a little junction off the Oxford Canal, which is over here behind us. Oxford is four miles that way. Banbury is 26 miles that way, up and down the Oxford Canal. And that away, via the Wolvercote Mill Stream, is the River Thames. And this is what we're here to look at today. The Duke's Cut is a quarter of a mile long. It's a fairly popular boat for long-term moorers. And then there's about half a mile of the mill stream. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to look at, there's a little stop lock. There's a lovely little bridge here, bridge 232. Yep. We're going to have a look at that. It's cold. Oh, isn't it's it cold? very cold. I've had to nick Karen's gloves because I but can't find my... I have the pink ones. He wouldn't wear pink. I wasn't going to wear pink. Not a chance. Not on your Nelly, mate. So uh, let's have a little look about. So give me a cuddle first because it's... Oh, it's cold. Oh, it's, cold. Oh, it's cold. Anyway, to business. This is lock 44, or Duke's lock. Just around the corner here is Duke's cottage, and just into the cut, there's a stop lock, uh, which is lock 44A. Uh, and it has a, a rise or a drop of pretty much no more than that. It varies a little bit according to the height of the canal, height of the river, but it's just a stop lock, and it's to protect the water level in the Oxford Canal. We're gonna go take a look at the Duke's cut, uh, and the first bridge, there's another bridge on the way which was added later on, which was the Oxford and Birmingham Railway Line Bridge. We'll take a look at that. We're going to walk down through the cut. There's boats parked up, moored up, both sides. Mostly long-term moorers, I think. Um, it's not the most salubrious of moorings, but it's home to a lot of people who choose it. And, you know, fair play, absolutely great. So, anyway, before we freeze into little icicles, let's go and have a look at Duke's Cut. Bridge 232, built specifically for the horses to negotiate the Duke's Cut. Towpath was over there and then it continued on over here and on into Oxford, or they'll have gone around here to the stop lock and then on over. Like all canal bridges, yes, you're absolutely right, you're right, it is. I'm going to tell them, shush, don't worry about it. So look, like all canal bridges, um, they're beautifully built. They really put a lot of effort into making sure that they're not only were they a good bridge, but they look good and they've stood the test of time. In the main part, there are a few around the network that have crumbled a little bit due to subsidence and other things. But in the main, they're hit, well, I'm doing it. I'm really, I'm doing it. Just in the main, they're absolutely beautiful bridges. And it's one of the things that I absolutely love about the canal network. Let's go have a look at the stop lock. This is a stop lock, Karen. A stop lock, generally speaking, is of a very small rise or fall and is done uh, specifically to just keep water in or sometimes out of a canal. That way is Wolvercote Mill Stream and then around the corner a little bit, the River Thames. The River Thames can rise and fall a heck of a lot more than your canal usually does. So when we're looking at here, from one side to the other, the difference is only about this, not a lot at all. There's something wrong with a paddle that size, side, so, so you've just got to, you've got to use this side. Uh, we've heard from uh, Duke's Lock Dave that it's a little bit slow to operate because there's only one paddle, but it's only a short drop, so it shouldn't be too bad. And anyway, who's in a rush on the canals? We wouldn't be, would we? Yeah. The only thing we'd be rushing about today would be how quickly we can get the wood-burning stove going oh, yeah. so we could toast ourselves and the cats, right? I'd, ha I'd have the wood-burning st uh, stove going early morning. Early morning. It wouldn't be off. This time of year, uh, it'd be on all the time. Be. Come on, let's get back across. Do you want a lift? Walk She's walking around. I'll go the quick way. <laughs> hey, that would be great for camera. Bloosh. The cut itself is 1,288 feet long, or if you like, 489 yards. Anybody who watches our channel will know that uh, the canals were built in old money, yards, feet, inches, furlongs and miles. And, uh, and that's how we talk about them. I'm sure if you want to, you can convert that into meters, but we'll stick with that for now. Uh, we're going to have a walk down. We're going to have a look at where the cut meets the Wolvercote Mill Stream. Uh, and the Wolvercote Mill Stream was called that because it was the Wolvercote Mill, the paper mill. And this was owned by the Duchy of Marlborough. 
uh, in the early 1700s and it was the Duke of Marlborough who decided to build this through but purely for transport of coal because it was going to be a lot cheaper than bringing it up from the Midlands down the Oxford Canal. That's why it was built. Anyway, let's have a wander down and, uh, and, and look at the rest of it because there's, there's quite a bit to see. It's still cold. It isn't going to warm up. But um, Karen's promised me a nice cuddle. <laughs> this is Duke's Pond, just behind the Duke's Lock Cottage. And according to the signboard up there, it's a really good habitat for all sorts of wildlife, including kingfishers, otters, to speak of just a few. They're keeping their heads down today. It's a bit cold. Managing the site, the Burks and Bucks Knox and Wildlife Trust have been working with the Canal and River Trust to carry out much-needed habitat works on the long-forgotten site, ensuring it continues to be a wildlife haven. A specialist amphibious vehicle was used to open up the pond and create meandering channels through the reeds. Local contractors and volunteers opened up the pathway and re-pollarded the ancient willows. We're looking at possibility of reed buntings, otters, kingfishers, uh, amazing looking dragonflies including a four spotted chaser and, and there's a great deal of plant life as well, purple loose strife. It's, it's very pleasant to visit, I would suggest. Springtime and summertime, possibly autumn, because it's a bit cold today. <laughs> This is the Wolvercote Mill Stream and although it runs a little bit further towards Oxford past the, the cut itself, once you come out of Duke's Cut and do a hard right you meander your way through here and from the cut to the River Thames is about a third of a mile. It's pretty wild, mooring is definitely difficult, you need a good sized gangplank and some serious spikes in the ground as well. There are a couple of boats moored further up. We're going to have a wander down and just have a look at where it joins the River Thames and, uh, and, and then I think we're going to finish and go and find somewhere warm. Duke's Cut connects the Oxford Canal with the River Thames via the Wolvercote Mill Stream. It is named after George Spencer who was the fourth Duke of Marlborough. It was his land through which the waterway was cut. Duke's Cut is recognised as a branch of the Oxford Canal. The cut was constructed at the request of the Duke of Marlborough. The Duchy of Marlborough had owned the Wolvercut paper mill since 1720, and much of the surrounding land belonged to their Blenheim Palace estate. In the 1790s, the Duke saw the benefit of bringing Warwickshire coal to the area, as the Upper Thames area typically only received fuel from the Northumberland coal field via London. There was very little of that left by the time their vessels reached the Upper River. As owner of the land between the Oxford Canal and the Mill Stream, the Duke was very much aware of how level it was and how well suited it was to become a waterway. He permitted the construction of a 500 yard cut to join the two waterways. The Mill Stream provided a connection to the River Thames above Kings Weir, bypassing the flash lock. The cut opened in 1789. The exact date is unknown, but an advertisement in William Jackson's Oxford Journal, published by the tenant of Wolvercut Mill and printed on the Mill's paper, showed that the cut had opened by October the 3rd, 1789. Just a little bit that way, literally 200 yards, is the end of Wolvercote Mill Stream, where it joins the River Thames. Had a little wander up and had a look to see if we could go, but it's a bit of an, an invasion of people's privacy. There's lots of moored boats up there, and it's clearly people's homes, so we're not going to go up. We're just going to have a look at it from here. There's a couple of boats just off a of camera as well, and again, they're private boats, and we're not going to encroach on that. So, uh, given that I'm wearing Karen's gloves, <laughs> I've put my finger through. They don't really fit me, but they've kept my hands warm. Anyway, so uh, let's head back. So, well, that was cold, wasn't it? It's freezing. She's, she's a bit nithered. We've just seen 
brass monkey with the welding torch. Figure oh, that one out. I've seen two. Seen two. So, uh, what are we doing next week? We go to the Hatton Flight. Hatton Flight in Hatton, a little bit south of Birmingham. Really cool up there. Hopefully, the weather won't be quite so cool. Oh, yes, you know, I do a weather dance. Weather dance, okay. We're also thinking of doing the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol, where it crosses the uh, River Avon, built by, uh, or rather designed by, Isambard Kingdom Brunel, but it was built after his death. More on that later on. Meanwhile, we want them to... Press the like button. Press the like button. And please subscribe to our channel. We are now in full swing making a video a week, aren't we? We are, and yes. subscribers are growing. But we want more. We want more people to watch out there and watch our lunacy and watch us be silly buggers out in the freezing cold and in all weathers, don't we? So quick yep. cuddle and then we can go. Come on in. Oh. Warm fire, glass of wine. Let's go. Oh, yes.